But yeah, so I suppose we should probably, vaguely, mm. discuss what we're actually doing here. Yes. Why we're doing this. Yes. Who we are. Yeah. That's that's how we should have started. What's up, my movers and shakers? That's on Wonky. I'm Dave. This is uh, the MS Paints Rock and Country Hour. Uh, this is Michael Chump Change. Yes, he's related to John Chump Change. Uh we might get into it. There's there's 200 episodes of this podcast. So. 100%. There's 200 episodes of content in it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and why are we here, mate? I wanted to start a hobby chat show because everyone else has got one and they look like they're having a fucking great time. They look like they're having the time of their lives <laughs> and none of them are inviting me back because all their videos got fucking demonetized. Well, because you're too 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 much with a mouth. Too sweary. Too much with a yeah, yeah, yeah. ass. Yeah, I think the, the, the poor old bastards at the painting phase actually lost money on paying for my train ticket to get me there. <laughs> you wanted an excuse to talk to people in the hobby. You wanted some kind of a chat show. Well, that, that does bring up the question that everyone's probably asking, like, why is he there? And not someone else who knows what they're doing. Um, and I just, I just thought it'd be funny to fucking put you through the ringer, to be honest. Yeah. I, I distinctly remember I was watching a How to Make Pine Trees guide by uh, an incredibly talented and skilled YouTuber, but also uh, you, you can watch it to go to sleep. Right. Um, Luke Towen, who does uh, Boulder Creek Railroad, I think. And he, his stuff is immaculate. It looks incredible. Uh, I was watching how to do pine trees and it was 45 minutes of him drilling little holes into a piece of pine dowel and then putting individual like hairs from a broom into the holes. And I just sat back and thought, this might not be for me. This this might be a, a little bit too much. And I ended up just getting a load of drain cleaner and just fucking swimming it on a stick. That looked like a pine tree. Uh, but then I pointed it out to you and I said, look how fucking tedious this looks. And then you looked at me and said, mate, I'm not going to lie to you. Everything you do looks that fucking tedious to me. Uh, so that's reason number one. <laughs> yeah. No, it really did strike me in that moment that that thing, like I'd, I'd sat next to you in the office and watched you watch a lot of tutorials. You've watched and, me watch people sanding resin for half an hour. Absolutely. And there was nothing yeah. in particular <laughs> about making pine trees out of brooms that was that was any more tedious than anything else I'd ever seen. <laughs> And um, yeah. that followed, I'm sure, with one of the many conversations we've had about how you would like me to get into this, and I've just been pretty vehemently against that. I, I, I'll be honest, I don't want you to get into it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that, honestly, that's a big weight off my shoulders yeah, yeah, yeah. for this, this no, whole no. endeavour. I, 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 I want you to understand it better. Yeah, yeah. Because um, that, that's the crux of this video cast is, is you understanding things better, but also your outside perspective on it. Mm. Um and you're a well-travelled man. You're very knowledgeable. Thank you. Uh, fair and tender lover, I'm told. Ooh. 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 Mr. Worldwide. Uh, <laughs> you had to fucking get that in. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Worldwide. Every time you get on That's what my mum calls me. Uh, yeah, and because you've got an outside perspective, mm. like I watch and listen to hobby podcasts, and I enjoy them, mm -hmm. and I have friends that do it, but there'll be this, there'll be like a 15-minute block in every single one of them, and it is completely understandable because it is a Warhammer crowd, and it is by Warhammer people, generally, uh, where they just basically flip into a different dimension. And I'm sat there like... What? Where have we gone? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're yeah, You about. didn't go to the TED Talk, the seminar. Exactly. I <laughs> the you preamble. missed the memo on that yeah, one yeah, game yeah. system, and so you, you don't get to enjoy half the podcast. Yeah, which is, which is very Games Workshop of them, I mm. guess. Yeah, you didn't buy this? Fuck you. <laughs> so it's it's kind of my job to keep us on track. Yeah, you're the great leveller. Yeah. And you'll probably ask for some translation. I'm later. most excited to have you find out how much you really know, mm. based on the questions I ask. Yes. <laughs> and of course, we're going to get some guests in. Yes. Uh, and when me and him start tugging each other off over a camera talk... <laughs> And all that crap, they can be like, guys, none of that. Stop. Yeah. Stop. They will great level us. Yeah. <laughs> they will, in fact, level, level the leveler. Us. Yes. The leveler gets leveled in today's episode of The Great Leveler Gets Derailed. The Great Derailment. The Great Derailment. <laughs> <laughs> MS Paints are the Great Derailment. <laughs> <laughs> 
What's up guys, Tony Slip and Slide here, back in perpetual forward motion, and I'm here to talk to you today about your behavior, about today's sponsor of the Squarespace. Ever wanted to know what it was like to design a website from scratch? No, me neither. Well, thanks to Squarespace, you don't gotta be doing none of that icky coding or programming stuff. Because with Squarespace's browser-based web builder, you can pick from a selection of templates and be ready to start making the website of your dreams in minutes. With so many templates from award-winning designers, there's just too many places. But with so many, with so many, with so many templates from award-winning designers, there's just so many places for you to make a start on building your website. But hey, have you had the but hey, have you had a bad experience in the past with your website going down? Not no fuck. No problem. Squarespace has a reliable spot. Squarespace has a reliable service hosted all around the world. And along with 24-hour technical support, your website is in safer hands. Have you ever fancy putting a portfolio online of all your fancy paint miniatures? Well, now you can. Because Squarespace's templates feature everything from portfolios to vlogs to blogs to daily news updates, all in one browser-based interface. Wow! And as always, guys, it wouldn't be Tony D slip and slide time without mentioning the domain acquisition tab, guys. Simply head over there, type the name and the address you want to give your fresh and funky website, and immediately connect it to the rest of the world. So start your online journey today by heading to squarespace.com forward slash MS Paints and using the code MS Paints at checkout to save yourself 10% off your first website subscription or domain. <laughs> All right, Barney. And I think there's people out there also that don't really understand the minutia of certain things. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think it's 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 an iceberg, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm a I'm a big fan of Metal Gear Solid. It's one of my things that I like. Mm -hmm. And there are many a uh, YouTube video about the Metal Gear Solid yes. iceberg. Yeah. You know, you've got the very top, which is like. The things everybody understands, and then just mm -hmm. before the water, you get all the secrets that people yep. kind of get. And then as you get deeper and deeper in the water, the iceberg just keeps going again, bigger and bigger, <laughs> until you get to the bit at the bottom where Hideo definitely wanted somebody shitting off the balcony instead of pissing off the balcony in M MGS2, and that there's letters about it. You know, like yeah. the, the, it's kind of like that. Yes. Like, at yeah. the very top, it's just people like you painting little men with guns, mm -hmm. and then you play like what kind of looks like chess, sort of against yep. each other. Yep. And then obviously you can drill down quite mm -hmm. a lot until you get to Mr. Gun Cannon here. And yeah, you get to Mr. Gun Cannon, basically. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there's probably, that's the problem. There's about 87 different icebergs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Because what you've just said has probably deeply fucking offended a scale modeler. <laughs> a scale modeler? Yeah. Is that different, you would say, a scale modeler from. Uh, to save us getting uh, lynched. <laughs> We're getting lynched already. <laughs> from one of it. You gotta be careful with scale modelers, mate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, forgive me. That is scale modeling. Let me have this. That is scale modeling, but also um, scale modelers would look at that and go, "You shut the fuck up." Yeah. Not See, scale I modeling. scale modeling uh, uh, to me mm -hmm. implies that there is something mm -hmm. to which you're scaled. Yes. And I, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure gun cannons real. I don't think he's a real man. Not yet. Not yet. But so, how can he be a scale model of something if the thing itself doesn't really exist? He's based on a fictional thing, which has stats and height and all that. Okay. So, in theory, he—I mean, he's one one hundred scale that specific version. Okay. But it's, like, I could just make something up and say it's yeah. as big as I want. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just as long as we're on the same. Yeah, page. yeah, yeah. As long as your your scale model of that bigger that thing mm -hmm. is scaled in proportion to it. Okay. As long as you don't change your mind. Okay. Uh, so yeah, scale modelers would argue that Warhammer is not scale modeling. Warhammer players would argue, but but it is. It is surely yeah. by the if this can be a scale model, yeah. then this can be a scale model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the, the dangerous prospect we have here is, I would end up very early doors bringing up the problem we all have and we all face, which is there are three different scaling languages. The languages of yes. scale, yes. not just like feet meters. No, 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 no. So railway guys have letters. Yeah, like O and double O. O, double O, G. Do you yeah, know I, know, I know some things. Yeah, yeah. G. H, O, N, O scale, mm -hmm. um, which do vaguely correlate to numbers. Okay. Uh, like military modeling Gundam, that has a number like 1144, 100, uh, 160. Military modeling and Gundam. They have actual scales. But that's one thing. 
The scale is, yes. The scale is the same, okay. And miniature tabletop games are in millimetres. Okay. So that is a 28 mil, 28 millimetre model, as is that, as is that. But so that so the difference is that this is not named based on its scale to something else, whereas the other things are. This is one one hundredth scale, which means it's it's. I think it. I think that is twenty eight millimeters to a meter. Someone please correct me in the comments, but I think that's how it works. So miniature tabletop gaming models mm-hmm. are measured in millimeters, and I think it's the number to the meter. Okay, so if if he's a twenty eight mil model, that doesn't mean he's twenty eight millimeters high. It means that the scale is twenty eight mil per meter. Yes, I think so. Well, I've learned something. Yes, pack it up. Uh, of course, that's null and void because those are twenty eight millimeter heroic scale. <laughs> <laughs> and heroes, as we all know, are big, small, big. They're bigger, big, big, big. They're bigger. Big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're looking at the Lord of the Rings uh, strategic operations battle simulator, as we all should, uh, that is twenty eight millimeter true scale. True scale. Yes, uh, because Carl Urban said, "I am not fucking looking like that." Why are his head? Why is his head and his hands so fucking big? He looks like a puppet. <laughs> it's basically what he said. Uh, so they had to make it true scale. So that was that was good. Maybe we'll call, uh, we can't call this podcast sidetracked because that's what the painting phase called it. But we can call it derailment. <laughs> <laughs> Full on fucking derail. <laughs> Patreons get five additional derailments per <laughs> episode. <laughs> I'll get a little soundboard that you push the button and it's the sound of a train horn. And it then is a the train one, crash. It's the one thing that we're missing for this setup, really, is, is soundboard. the soundboard. But you and I, I think, would have a fist fight over who gets to press the buttons. We put it in the middle. <laughs> it's just sharing a deck. Right. So, so yeah, what is, what's all this? What's all this? All this guff. All this gubbins on the tablet. So, I was thinking. You've never built one of these before. You've built a Gundam before. I did. I have built a Gundam, yeah. yes. Uh, I built... I built... It's actually one of my proudest possessions ever. Yes. You brought back from Japan and or just ordered for me? No, I was really annoyed that I didn't buy it while I was out in Japan for yeah. 30 quid and then spent more money and shipping to buy one for me. Well, I was going to buy one for you for your birthday. Yeah. And then I thought, fuck this twat. He's not, not no. So I bought another one. I bought two. And ordered the, from Japan. These are... Scale model Metal Gear Rexes yep. from Metal Gear Solid One, mm-hmm. which is, even though it's not actually my president in terms of Metal Gear, it is the coolest looking Metal Gear. It is by um, far, and yeah. it's it was so sick yeah. doing that model yeah. because it was so intricate. Yes, and that was kind of more Gundam style. It I assume is. it feels more. It felt yeah. more Gundamy to put together. Yeah, push fit, no glue. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is. Oh god, he's just, he's just trying to keep all the elitists happy. This is don't worry about it. Kind of like the nice, I know the nice mid ground of the hobby. I okay. would say in that you have to put them together and paint them. Mm-hmm. Um, but the there's less things to worry about. The putting together element of these never felt like it would be too difficult or taxing to me. But no. that's probably more because I've never considered it than because that's the truth. I think you'll have a good time with these. Okay. This is these look like as well when I think of Warhammer. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Yes, of. yeah. A Space Marines tactical squad. Yes, with this, the blue and the gold. These are, I think, maybe two thousand one, two thousand two. Mm. But they're they're new. Mm. They're the most successful kit I think they've ever made. Well, wow. because you get, I think it's ten dudes in there. It used to be quite affordable, <laughs> uh, and it's only a slight update from the ones that I had a kid as a kid in the nineties. Mm. So it's just legs, body, head. Arms and a gun. Cool. So they're easy enough in theory yeah. to put together. Well, that that Rex took me several hours over a couple of days. Yes, yes. and I did break a couple of bits of it. Yes. <laughs> one of his little one of his little foot snappers is fallen off. Yeah, there's loads of tiny little bits. On yeah, there. there were a lot of tiny little bits, and and even though the the instruction booklet actively had loads of exclamation marks. Yes. And like, don't fuck this up. Yeah. It's the exclamation mark with the Japanese kanji. You like that feels important. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I was, but then, and I was like, "Well, I'll just be careful." And then apparently, I wasn't careful enough. No, it does happen. It does happen. I break the fingers on these bastards all the time. I was actually these fingers are sick. I don't know if you can see. We've put the microphone in his hand. Mm-hmm. We have one over here as well. Mm-hmm. But I was very impressed by his ability to like actually grip the oh, cable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's more stable than most. Of the film equipment we own. (laughs) Yes, he is. (laughs) Doing a better job than most of the boom operators I've ever worked with. 
You've only worked with me. Well, yeah. I've got to be careful. I keep looking at that. You keep looking at that. You want I to need to that. look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. So, yeah, if you see me looking that, like that, it's because that's where my face is. Yes. And I, I'm used to seeing my face mainly on Zoom calls. Um. <laughs> so, so move those to one side. So for my initiation, yes. I'm not sure we've even necessarily fully disguised what's happening here. Yeah, so you are going to build one model. From Just the, one? From the space, yes, from the Space Marine Tactical Squad. Uh, and I think you're going to do just fine. Oh, these guys are cool. They look like birds. This guy's, they've got beaks. Oh, the beaky marines. Yeah, yeah, Beak yeah. Beak marines. Yeah, those are uh, their initial design in the late 80s. They had these beaky helmets. And they've never fully committed to moving to these uh, more Darth vader -y. Oh, right. Because this is absolutely what they look like. Yes. But so you're so, but they they still put a couple of these in. If you want beaky helmets, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. We got various amounts of medals for uh, their achievements. Uh, called purity seals, actually. Purity seals. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So okay. they they put them on things. They're like wax seals with a bit of parchment on. It's. Uh, it's all part of the Angry Crusader Nazi gimmick. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be easy enough for you. I think so. I think I can see. I can see. I can see. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the fucking sprue ergonomics are fucking delicious on this. Yeah, like I almost feel like if I line these up, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could probably just go down top to bottom and make a dish. I mean, you can you can absolutely just wing it if you. Well, want. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin your whole set, you know. Yes. If it because I, I don't want you to then actually want to build them, which I know you never will, and find that there's like one of each bit missing. Well, if, okay. I know, if I know you've built one, the OCD is going to keep me up at night. I, you'll have to build the rest. I'll have to build the rest and put them in my well, never to paint pile, basically. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll be so fast at this that. Um. I'll build all of them. Right, you cocky fuckers. So what I want you to do, because they're simple kits, you clip off the bits you need with them. Mm -hmm. Because they're simple kits. Yeah, so in, with the simple ones, you can clip off all the bits, and they're still obvious what they are. There's some kits now that are so obtuse with tiny bits. Right. I clip them off one at a time to keep track of what's going on. Okay. Mm. 49 and 48. Oh, 48A. Oh, I see. They're in two parts. Oh boy! So the, there's two bits of the arm. No, no. Is it just because there's two that's the same? Oh, there's three of them. I've got you. Okay, where's forty nine? He's down here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take one forty eight A. Well, stands it better than I do at the minute. One forty eight A. One forty eight A. There we go. And one forty nine A. It's a little bit. Confusing that they say A on them, but it doesn't say A on the paper. On the paper, does it say A on the paper anywhere? Uh, it it does not. Thankfully, they're arms, legs, and heads, so it's it's not too hard. Okay, I have two hands, two arms. Excuse me, a lefty and a righty. It seems that way, and they go onto a body that I haven't got. Am I supposed to have built the body by now? Maybe we... Oh, we're down here. Okay, okay, yeah, let's okay. Let's start here, actually. Let's start. Yeah, let's start one. on step two. Let me... Let me take these I like we, like, like we always should. We'll start on step two. Okay, so we're going to find 11 and 22. We can talk while I'm doing this. We can definitely talk while we're doing this. Yeah. 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 This is this is another common thread with... Um, 11. Some of the older kits that have been updated with new rules is they're more like abstract religious text than they are instruction manuals. Um yeah, it's more more nostalgia for the people who already know how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they wanted to instructions. Yeah, they they wanted to take you back to your childhood when you didn't know what you were doing, so they just artificially created that, uh, and that the instructions aren't going to be a patch on the Japanese ones and racks because the Japanese instructions. Japanese most things they know what they're doing. They do. They don't they do mess around. Uh, did you see the clip of? What well, did you see that? France and Japan mm. had a basketball game at the Olympics. Okay. And it went to extra time um, yeah. before the French, unfortunately, won. But it was like a one-point game for a long time. Yeah, yeah, But the Japanese players 
were the size of Japanese people. Yes. And the French players were the size of basketball players. And it was hilarious to see the Japanese like scoring baskets oh, against wow, okay. eight foot tall yeah, yeah, French yeah. people. Like it was really, really very impressive. Yeah. And it was very tense the whole way through. Yeah. And then like, like a lot of the angles, you couldn't really see that there was a humongous difference in size. Yeah, yeah. And every now and then they'd cut to a shot and you're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> how has this happened? <laughs> right. Okay. We, we're going to put our first bits together. Well, those are really tiny, really tiny, like connectory bits. Yeah. So that's where glue comes in, mate. Hmm. Also, oh, we actually have to glue them together. You do? All right, Gundam kid. You have to glue them together. <laughs> they won't just stay together. No, they will not. Oh, my God. Really? Yes. I'm I'm genuinely a bit surprised. Okay, so all them together. Okay. Group. Hold them together. Hold them together, yeah. Not... Okay. Are, 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 you yeah. Can apply glue I'm, li- I'm listening. You tell me the way. And then if you brush that on the joins on the sides... That kind of makes the problem go away. You probably need to hold it for 30 seconds and then you might be good. So just down the down the sides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be quite messy with that. It evaporates real quick. So it doesn't Should I put going. it into as many of these little gaps as I can yeah, go? Yes, I think so. It's evaporating already. I am telling you to do slightly the wrong thing so all the fucking keyboard warriors get their dicks out. For well, me. that is <laughs> how you get money on this platform. Get money. Okay. I've glued it. Cool. Bob it down. I thought I was supposed to hold it for 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, hold it for 30 seconds. Obviously, you twonk. <laughs> Mixed messages here from my teacher. <laughs> right, okay. That's your own little section. Mixed messages. Here we go. <laughs> from the mail room. From the mail room. Yeah. For the men. Right. So I did that. Now legs. You did that. Now legs. Oh, no. Or do I go to... Oh, no. Okay, that's part of part two. We're okay. The legs are part of part two. Yeah. So you, These like, yellow, the bits that are yellow on here, is this where they anticipate that you put glue? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're going we're to do that with this one. Yeah. So Bob a cheeky bit Bob of Bob a little dome of glue. Yeah. On that boy. And of course, there are an infinite amount of different glues we could be using. Would you like to know about glue? Talk to me about glue while so we, we do, do this. About glue. Okay. We've got many different kinds of glue. Okay. Which oh, one's this? I like this. It smells good. <laughs> it does smell really fucking it good. It smells really good. This is Tamiya Extra Thin. Um, it also really does do glue, doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got the Games Workshop glue, which is mid-tier. You've got the Revel glue, and they've all got like needle applicators there. Completely fine. But when you once again level up to a Japanese product, um, it's like the clouds are parting. Uh, because this has a really low surface tension, it goes into all the cracks. Yeah. And because I think it's majority solvent and not so much medium and body, mm-hmm. it evaporates like a solvent. Mm. So it dries and it cures and it goes real quick. Yeah. So I painted on the base of the legs there and, and mm-hmm. I became immediately concerned that it was all going to evaporate before I actually put mm-hmm. the thing on. Yes. Yeah. There's There's been some models with shitloads of detail and where I've... I've Literally couldn't get it to stick and just actually poured a bit of Tamir in there. And it's been completely fine. These are not even remotely in number order. No, no, no. No. I didn't plan on this being just me, bitch. <laughs> um, I understand. Have you I turned understand. this into a fuck Kim's Workshop video cast already? <laughs> yeah, by bitching about it. <laughs> I understand that they... they Because we filmed a video mm. at Whaling Games. Yes, we did. And... They were printing out sprues. And I understand that there's an element of organizing sprues into the most efficient order so yes. that you can fit as much plastic mm-hmm. on one sprue as possible. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. However, yes. since they're not in order in the book, mm. they could just be in order on here. Mm-hmm. Could they not? Mm. Like, give them numbers yeah, yeah, yeah. after the sprue. Again, what we have is a sprue that someone designed 20 years ago uh, with an updated book. And this is obviously designed for the maximum amount of plastic for the little as little sprues as possible. Um, okay, I give up. You give up already? 112, please. 112. For his little, um, his little courtesy curtain. <laughs> a sharon, they call it. In a sharon? Yes. In Thailand? In Thailand. Interesting. Is that where they're from? What, Sharon's or Space Marines? 
<laughs> Schwartz. <laughs> Was it 113? 112, 113. There they are. Yeah, there they are. There they are. Oh, come. There they are. They were right there the whole time, guys. Yeah. They were right there. So clip those two bits out. Yep. Uh, actually, decide which way you want, because this icon means you've got a choice. That icon that's three shields in an orange circle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means you've got a choice. Okay. I like it. If it was a Japanese kanji with an exclamation mark, you'd be like, yeah, got it. <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to go for this one, which is 113, because it looks a bit bougier. It does look a bit bougier. 112 yeah. looks a little bit like a caveman's um, loincloth. Yes. 113 looks a little bit more yes. like the Emperor's Sharon. Yes, you've, de you've definitely chosen what someone who doesn't have to paint 300 of these would do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, you, like, I, I suppose if I was looking to paint them, you, I would want as little detail as possible. Yeah, 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 you've managed to go from two but to that's not five. part of this. No, no, no. Today. <laughs> so before you, you bosh that on, I want to talk to you about mould lines. I was just about to ask you about about this now horrendous little chunk of plastic stick gubbins. We'll deal with that as well. So with this one, you've got something called mould lines, which is basically where two the two sides of the mould meet, uh, and yeah. there's a bit of breathing room in between them, yeah. and you get that little little line there. Yeah. So it's called mould lines. Uh, historical war gamers call it flash. Um, oh, is that what flash is? Yes, I've heard the word flash. There's different context in a in a sports ball game when someone goes on the pitch. That's a different kind of flash. Okay. There's a superhero called the Flash. There is who beats up people in. I know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. That's all I got. But in the context of wargaming, in the con <laughs> to to rerail the derailment. Yes. <laughs> rerail. Uh, rerail. Uh, I'm going to use this shiv. That's the nicest one. And oh yeah, look at this. Now we're in fucking hobby zen time. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I was gonna, like, kick off on your behalf about lazy manufacturing. But now that I've seen you get to use a little cool little file, you see, maybe it's all right. You're seeing where the zen aspect comes from. Mm. You also got this that my mate Stubby, don't ask why he's called Stubby, uh, gave me, which has become a tripod plate tool but it is a specific mould line remover, and this will cost you £20. Wow, I've seen a lot of those, or at least that one, knocking around the office. It definitely has been used and abused. Uh, but it's actually not a bad tool, and it is quicker, and it just gets rid of a okay, bit we'll of stuff. I'll get all the fun, then. Let's, let's have a go. I've got a first edition Star Wars Legion box you can do when you've done that one. <laughs> do you remember these... Uh, these two files from a certain airport incident we had. <laughs> I certainly remember that that there were files involved in an airport incident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're so nice and lovely. I paid the eighteen pounds for them to hold them in a drawer for me until we got back. Yeah, because you tried to get what is essentially two knives through just two fucking nasty shivs. Yeah, two nasty shivs through um, airport security. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they were shockingly calm about that. Yeah, I mean, you look at me and think, he's he's not stabbing anyone particularly fast. Um, also, he's dumb enough to leave his shivs in the bag. Uh, but this was after I had to bin a bag of Snowflock, mm. which basically looks like a bag of Coke. And they were just like, shall we not? Yes. This store's actually like, it's a little bit more aggressive than you imagine. He's more aggressive. Like, if you, you could easily over-file. Yeah. To say it's just a piece of metal, it is impressive. I hope that this camera is picking up all of my horrendous concentration face. Yeah, kind of. You're in shadow, but we just about got you in that one. <clears throat> Are you happy with that? Uh, I'm oh. happier with the side you did. <laughs> Where, where's it? Give me something else. Uh, Give me this something is... else. Give me something with a real sharp point. I'll shut with you. Want a knife? Just... I just want to... Just give me that. Give me that. This? Whatever that is, I want. Yeah, that's a file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's but it's also pretty sharp on the ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because we're like, we're approaching. Oh, yeah, you've got tiny little mold lines in between all that stuff. Yeah, it's all over his knee. Mm. I suppose as well, <clears throat> it only needs to be texturally correct, right? Because you've got to paint it. Yeah, the, the paint will well, be. Obviously, you're never going to paint this model, but contextually. No, you're going to paint that. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> Next episode. On derailment. 
Get the rail. <laughs> Michael drinks paint. <laughs> okay, how's that? I'm not very happy with his knee. It kind of looks like he scuffed his knee. I think that's all good. I think that's fine. Did you do inside the legs? You didn't do inside the legs. Inside the legs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. But that's good, because these are straight lines, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... Not to get too real too quickly. Okay. As a man with shaky hand disease, why... You've made yeah. an entire career and life around doing this shit, and yeah, I yeah. I don't have shaky hand disease, and I can barely do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's crazy. Don't forget Impressive. the fucked eyes as well. Well, so yeah, it's really hard to see. Yeah, I'm I'm starting to get a headache. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your glasses? Uh, upstairs, I think. But yeah, that probably is what I need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, he's got a little. He's, the, he's got a little bit too much of a crotch bulge. Yeah, that? did you know that uh, Space Marines, during their um, transformation from human into Space Marine, they have their penises removed? I didn't know they were humans. Well, I th- actually, no. Sorry, I should rephrase that. I thought they were humans. Uh, no. They go from humans to being Space Marines? Yeah, it's like a transformative process, and no matter how right I am in my description of it, someone will definitely tell me I'm wrong, so I'm not going to bother. Right, right, um, right. But right, basically... Right. Um, yeah, I think they get their wangers chopped. Right. Um, Are they... And... Stay there. Yeah. Careful, mate. You <laughs> led me down this path. And they're all men? Yes. This this, this kind of space marine, yes. anyway. Yeah, yeah. Until, okay. until you go back to the 80s when they were for female space marines, but we're not talking about that. Okay. Because that's non-canon. Not canon, no more. No, no, no. Just like uh, Luke Skywalker's children. Yes. Yes. Yes, I still read that encyclopedia now and again and then put it down and remember it's all worthless now. A much better story that means nothing. <laughs> hey, mate, come on. I don't think I'm likely to get much quick back on that, am I? I think we can all agree that the yeah, extended yeah. universe yes. novels of Star Wars are a better story than every extended the universe. three worst Star Wars movies. Yes, objectively speaking. The objectively speaking three worst Star Wars movies. Yes, so they all get their wangers cut off. Um don't know where I was going with that. I just thought it was just fun, fun space. Well, yeah, it's trivia. funny because you wouldn't have thought that based on the crotch armor. No, I think is what makes that yeah, an yeah. interesting point. Yes, this man is clearly protecting something, and it would appear that that's his dignity. He's compensating. He's compensating. Mm. Can you just space make... marines overcompensating? Are they? Mm. No, I mean the size of these guns, mate. <laughs> they are bigger than their bodies. Yes. Right. I. 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 Yeah. Okay. So you were asking me why I do this. Yeah, why, 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 why did you decide to pick? Because you didn't really pick up this hobby. I mean, obviously, you did it when you were a kid, yeah, but you yeah. didn't really pick up this hobby in full force until after it became no, I, objectively harder. I, I, for I, pick, you. I picked up the hobby before I got sick, right? Um, and didn't really want to stop, mm-hmm. um, and then just kind of went from there. Really, mm. like refused to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been fucking blockaded in most of my creative endeavours through life and thought nah I'm not going to stop myself <laughs> yeah 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 you are, you're gonna, someone's going to have to come and force you to stop yeah 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 yeah. I'm not enough middle management twats telling me I can't use bagpipes in a soundtrack I'm like no I've still got control over this so that, that was basically it and it is despite a work thing it is very zen mm. um, do you find that it actually helps with the like the motor skills thing as well that you're like keeping it keeping yourself trained uh, I think it's all about the same. I think hunched in a chair all day, every Doing day. Doing this. Yeah. I can already feel that that's not good for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to, we need to get you some support on this. I, I work at a higher desk. So mm. I'm not leaning as much. Inspection, please, sir. Inspection, please, sir. I'll be honest, I don't feel too good about it. That's fine. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, there's a lot that can be forgiven once it gets spray painted. Well, yeah, I mean... That- yeah, yeah. Honestly, I'm surprised that I even had to do that because mm-hmm. I would have thought the painting would. No, no. Uh, mold lines are a, a breaker in the rule. Everything can be hidden with a hidden with a flat primer. Uh, no, mold lines, no, not so much. No, the devil's the devil's food. Okay, well, let's put his modesty cloth on. Yep, that's fiddly as fuck, no, isn't it? It certainly is. That's a dab of glue. Then bob it on with the other hand here. Do you want to have a look? Okay, <laughs> let, me, let me just let me just do watch it. So the the good thing about Warhammer is that it has such, a, yeah, it is. Oh, it goes underneath like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, on those little things going to his... Um, as you once referred to them in the middle of uh, a deadlifting session, cum gutters. Cum gutters, <laughs> yes. Yes, I stand by that. He goes into his cum gutters. The sea gutters. Yes. Sea gutters. The sea gutters, yeah. Friends with John Chump Change, Clive Gutterman. <laughs> Clive Gutterman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the good thing about Warhammer is that because so many different people do it, and speaking of deadlifts, I did, I did used to train with a guy at 5 a.m. It was a six foot seven rugby player could bench be on bench and he did warhammer as well well and he did it because he's a nervous anxious wreck and it's the only thing that chills him out well yeah i'm not surprised that 5 a.m benching 160 kilos i'd be fucking pissed off he as needed well. something to calm down about <laughs> yeah. didn't he <laughs> yes yeah, so we went and did his warm and then he went to uh, went to work yeah but yeah oh the, no i fucked it you fucked it that's okay it's okay i mean i did fuck it but it's okay the, the wonderful thing about it is that you can generally make mistakes okay yeah uh, because so many people do it and they see all different kinds of approaches and attempts and ideas. Um, well, that is kind of what I was expecting. That, like the glue yep. initially kind of, I'll be honest, kind of pissed me off. 10 minutes ago, I was annoyed that there was glue involved. Yep. But I can see how it does actually open up more possibilities for creative ideas because you can put different arms on him different yeah heads. you can do whatever you want like yeah when yeah. i when i saw those arms and i was like there's no sockets or anything yeah, yeah. but that means you really kind of could pull any arm off it? anything and it put it anywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. it also means that you're constantly having to make decisions to a degree while yeah, yeah. you're building yeah yeah your first one of these boxes will last you forever and as a child you will agonize on the coolest poses mm. and they all look like they're posing for an Avengers poster by the time you're done. Yeah. Like one guy's got his gun sideways with a gun in that hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them's yeah. holding his helmet with a gun on his shoulder. But that's not actually super practical for like an army if you wanted a realistic no. looking army. No, if you've got 90 of them on the table, they're all posing like... You need them all to look basically the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise it's going to look silly. Yes. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. But there, there is a degree of freedom and then obviously you can expand from that. Like these arms are obviously flat to the mount, but if you want to trim that, and then move the arm out sideways like that, and then you can fill the gap with clay and re-sculpt it, things like that. Mm. You can kind of just add to it whatever you want, um, which is the opposite of historical wargaming. Yes, where it's all about getting it exactly right. It's about to, to a large degree, it's about getting it all right. And that's what that's what I think of when going all the way back to our first conversation, scale modeling. Mm -hmm. That I think of as like wargaming. Like building tanks and cannons and little army men and stuff. It depends what you're going to use the tanks for. Mm. If you're scale modeling to make a tank, mm. that's scale modeling. If you're scale modeling for a war game, that's war gaming. If war gaming, the category covers this and actual war, like World War Two reenactment war gaming. Yeah, war that's game. historical war gaming. Okay. Unless you're talking about the actual reenactments. How do they feel about being his called historical war gaming and you get to be war gaming? Rather than them being war gaming and you being I th fuck about in a future gaming. I, yeah, I think they just call us all fucking Warhammers. For <laughs> <laughs> Warhammers. Yeah, historical is all about is is to a large degree, a large degree about the accuracy, um, because obviously you've seen my paint collections. There's a shade of blue for every shade the sky could be throughout the year, mm. and. Uh, miniatures, uh, miniature paint companies will specifically, ones that lean towards a historical market, will try and match those up to actual paints used at the time. Okay. Um, obviously, because, you know, uh, black and white photography, that's really going to fucking work, isn't it? Uh, or Napoleon, I'd, you know what? Napoleonic people get wound up about the colour of jackets and stuff. And it's like... But yeah, they don't know. How the fuck do you know? They don't know. Also, that person was covered in their own piss and shit after the first fight. <laughs> so what colour is it then? <laughs> to be fair, they might know. There must be like a Napoleonic, like. There's clothes like a, from the like time. Clothes from the time in. But that's. I mean, it's hundreds of years ago. It would be faded. Yeah, it would be faded. Maybe there's a science to pigment that I don't understand. Maybe there is a science to pigment. <laughs> I'm sure all of the paint people think there's a science to pigment. Right, I'm looking for 95. 95. 95 is like the main body of the weapon. There it is. 95. Mid hand. Mid hand. Yeah. Mid-handen. mid, -handen. mid, -handen. mid -handen. I'm glad I didn't attach the arms like it kind of insinuated I should. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's a whole thing about sub-assemblies, which is, which is just 
people do that. Some people fucking paint on the sprue, man. Some paint people the sprue. Some people paint before they cut it off. Yeah. Wow. Which is insanity for me because then you have to repaint the bit where you you clipped it. But anyway. Yeah. It just feels like an exercise in laziness to me. It's good content. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. That is right. That is right. So I get to now. I get to choose what mm. kind of weapon I want. Yeah. That one's got a purity seal on it. Yeah. So we've been that off. So we don't have to get the. Don't uh, have to worry about. We don't have to get the red and the white out. Uh, that is a plasma gun. That's a 97. 97 looks good to me. 97. It's going for a plasma gun. Okay. Don't oh, forget your mold lines, mate. Check for the mold oh lines. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of upsetting, and it? I don't know. Oh. Yeah. No. Oh. Have you got a ridged or grooved pattern with a mold line on it? I do. Oh. I do. Oh. How? Blessed are you on your first... Blessed be the fruit. On your first Warhammer experience, you found the bastard. <laughs> That's devilish. It is. It is. Uh, you just got to fucking take it, though, mate. Okay. How are you? Fe- are you enjoying yourself, or are you enjoying yourself because there's company? Hmm. Would I spend hours doing this by myself? There are there are people that just do it with others, and they'll sit in hobby shops. At- workstations with other people i'm if this is what this podcast is going to be then i'm then i'm then i would enjoy that i'll just give you a model to you just give me a model to chew on (laughs) and we just we just chew the shit shit to each other chew the for hat chew the for hat chew the for hat mate (laughs) honestly this bit Uh is not does not interest me Mm -hmm. super fiddly Mm -hmm. something i could objectively get wrong Mm -hmm. on merit Mm -hmm. (laughs) not not so much <laughs> not so much it's why the painting's kind of the same way you know the painting has a much more intimidating aura than this i would i would suspect for you i could be wrong but yeah yeah i i thought i i didn't think there was a way to get this wrong and i'm learning now that there is well you can you can kneecap yourself early days from having a perfect model yeah by not doing all of this extra stuff yes you know, whereas I kind of thought, I kind of thought that the, this bit of it, I need something way fire here. Like you tip it out of the box and it assembles itself like the T1000. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I did kind of think that the, the model kits, yeah. well, more like the Gundam kit mm-hmm. that I did, which which was yeah. essentially clipping things off and putting yeah. them together. Yeah. And you do it in an order and then yeah. it's done. Yeah. Which is, which is where you get the weird, the weird crossovers of things being called different stuff but they all have different degrees of everyone else's shit in them. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would say this is more actual true modelling than a Gundam. Because you've got extra tools, you've got glues, you've got other materials, you're going to have to paint it. Uh, But then Gundam people would say, nah, no. Well, no, but that's just because they're trying to defend themselves. Yes, yeah, it's true, yeah. Nothing to do with the truth. (laughs) That's nothing to do with the truth. That's nothing to do with the <laughs> truth. Objection. I won't have it. <laughs> well, um, I enjoy filing down the nubbin off the end of the gun. That's very satisfying. That's very satisfying yeah, yeah, yeah. for that to then be gone yeah, yeah. completely. Because I've I've always been a fan of really little things. That is another reason I meant to bring up why you're here. Yeah. It's because I can give you a fucking Hot Wheels car and you will just fucking... You're like a toddler with a crayon. Just... Oh. I love a I love a little shove it in your ear, and chew it. <laughs> I do love little tiny miniature versions of things. Yes, and the more detailed the thing is, mm-hmm. the more I'm into it. Yes. generally speaking, which is why we're treading very carefully here. Yeah, we, we don't need you to go down this rabbit hole, and that also doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be good enough. Okay, well I tell you what then, yeah. because you said that, I am not going to try and do the ridged bit. Is the ridge bit on the underside? Yeah, it's probably where the hand goes to hold the gun. To be totally honest with That's you, completely fine. But there is a, there is one here which I think needs to go. Mm-hmm. And this is not including the people that insist you drill your barrels. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, that but is, but that I yeah. th- I like that. You like that? I like That's that. That's interesting. Okay, we'll let you drill a barrel at some point, and then you can tell me if you like it. <laughs> Yeah. When it's, it's off center and you're like, oh, oh, oh. I, I am acutely aware that I've been doing this one now for some time. 
That's fine. It's your no, first but one. I mean, it is my first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, I can see how this might get away from you. Yeah, you can do. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. You, you like, you just pop out a box of these on a on a night. Yeah, and you're like, I'll just get get these done, and then I'll go cook tea, and then mm-hmm. then the sun comes up. No fucking yeah, yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the generally there is a huge time investment, and people mm. people will take a lot of pride in their stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people choose not to paint their shit, which mm-hmm. is fine. Uh, some people take you know an entire day to paint one model. Again, that's fine. Mm-hmm. It's entirely what you. I guess it depends what you want to get out of it. Yeah, yeah. I spent a lot of time collecting Pokemon cards and I've never played a game of Pokemon. Have you never played a game of Pokemon? I don't think so. Not with all the rules. No, I suppose not. As kids, we didn't play it. No, as kids, yeah. I would put my Charizard down against somebody's Machamp and go, I win! But that doesn't really count as playing <laughs> No. No. I have you about 10 hours to get the energy to get the attack off, so... Exactly, exactly. And nobody owns enough energy cards... Because everyone fucking gave them away to Yeah, no kid was carrying around enough energy cards to make a real deck. I have, however, played a lot of Magic the Gathering. Okay. I got very into Magic the Gathering for a time until until a friend of mine got more into it than me and decided it was worthwhile spending hundreds of pounds on certain cards. Is that the friend that had more? It's exactly the friend you would expect. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) He basically paid to win, yeah. He paid to win, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's fine. And that's one way to do it, right? I imagine that there are elements of that in this hobby as well. Yeah, with Warhammer is a genius move in the sense that people have, as we've just discussed, invested a lot of time into making their shit and they've invested a lot of money into it. Mm. And when you're in a certain ecosystem, the, the idea of leaving it is difficult Yeah, because, because you're fucking deep. Yeah, 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 specifically yeah. with this, they it's call time. The sunk cost fallacy. Maybe. The sunk cost fallacy. Yeah. Jesus Christ. S C F. The S C F. The scuff, mate. It's not a bad. If you could think of a pun, it's not a bad um, name for a, a war game in podcast. The scuff. The scuff. <laughs> <laughs> Derailment and the scuff. <laughs> Derailment and the scuffs. The new punk band. <laughs> Um, yeah, the sunk cost fallacy is basically you've put so much time into it that you that you think you'll lose more by stopping. Yes. When often yeah. the case is that if you just stop now, you'd be better off in the long run. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but what Games Workshop are very good at doing is making... Because you have different editions of the rules and different revisions of each... Each uh, faction has uh, a battle tome or a guidebook with its stats and its backlog and its fluff in it. And what they will do consistently is, at the end of one edition, take a kit that isn't selling especially well, and they will make it OP and broken as fuck. So everyone goes out and buys this kit. And then the new edition comes out, and that kit is no longer the best thing, but there's another best thing to buy that they've already got on the manufacturing line. So what you have is, if you if you met a chase, that is, and you want to be in competitive play... Mm-hmm. Uh, that is basically what is propping the 40k franchise up, is these people that every time there's a new book that comes out, and this is not a detriment to them, obviously they can afford to do that, they enjoy doing that, Uh, they'll buy all of the new stuff, or if they've already got it, they'll make the new stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just an easy way to keep it turning over, for old kits especially. If you've been manufacturing, excuse me, the same kit for 25 years, Mm -hmm. and you want to get some extra life out of it, just make it the new hot shit and everyone buys it. Yeah, I suppose because the stats of it aren't written on the model, they can decide whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas like the way that Magic does that is that they just they just make it so that only the last 18 months of cards are actually playable in competitive play. So yes. you just have to keep buying cards if you yeah, want to yeah. play. And I think I think a few months ago after the the Lord of the Rings one came out, they had a new set out every month, mm. which is fucking insanity. And uh Guys in Traveling Man keep trying to get us into it, and we're sat there playing the Sim City card game. Just like, I'm sorry, um, I'm, I'm up for election this month. Can you talk to me in a minute? You might be barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> sorry, I only play shit. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Only defunct '90s card games, mm, please. Absolutely, towers in time. So y- you can put as much time or as little time into it as you want. Um, Space Marines are kind of—they've been so popular because ultimately oh, they're. Oh, 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 you broke the loincloth, have? I broke the loincloth. I'm actually going to keep that off while I put the arms on. Yeah, yeah, okay. The arms are the trickiest bit because you've got to link the gun up in the middle. Yeah, I, I was, I was 
So Key eagle eye viewers may have noticed mm-hmm. my face contorting as you were recently speaking. Yes. Because I realized that yeah, I have to put I assume the most sensible so, way to do it would be to attach the gun to this arm. So glue that to his arm in yeah. isolation away from the body. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out like the angle. Because in th- like you there's a lot of because it's just flat on flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wants to be vaguely straight, right? Yeah, okay, okay. But the good stuff with this glue is that you get a bit of bend and give once it's set. So if you need to form it into the other hand, then it will have a bit of give. Yeah, yeah, whereas super glue doesn't. Actually, if you get this specific card, is super glue that is produced from Bulgarian cow's milk. I would say give that a minute before you attempt the other one. I just wanted to see vaguely if... That's fine. That's why we don't have carpets in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, then. Completely, nice. Completely, completely fucking 180'd completely on his perspective. Completely fine. Hobby. Love this fucking thing. This is so good. This is so good. Somebody should have told me about this. Why didn't you tell me Warhammer was this good? Okay, I'm going to put my arm on. You can put your second arm on. Should I glue in the hand? Is that what it suggests? Uh, glue the hand last, because you can just dab a little bit of that in for some grip. Mm. Okay, so I should glue his shoulder. Glue his shoulder. Get it in place. Get it in place. Chuck a touch of glue on his hand. That's the one. Okay, his hand's all sticky. His hand's all sticky. And then... Uh... It's going well. I'm so... I need to pursue a real diagnosis, but I'm pretty sure I'm dyspraxic. Like, for real, for real. Because I literally can't actually keep hold of things. I think it's just you're not used to handling things this tiny. Penis joke. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I can't hold my phone or the TV remote or open a door or walk no. in a straight line either, so... No, that is true. <laughs> no. It's not a new revelation. No. Our first game of... I remember our first game of fucking Star Wars Legion. Mm-hmm. And it was like I was playing with a drunken Andre the fucking giant. No offence. No, I mean... It- but the first thing you did was you had your arms in the air for some reason. Oh, fuck, I didn't get rid of pissing fucking lines. Sorry, you can do it in a minute. Yeah. And then you brought your arm down, and you was like, so right, what are we doing? You brought your arm down and immediately snapped an aerial off a, a walker unit. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that'll stick on one of I was like, well, it would if I could find it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, it's gone forever. And I think you were doing a shift at Sore Thumb once as well, and you did the same thing where you had your arms in the air, and you brought them down to say something sassy, and you just fucking punched the audio jack. Yeah. <laughs> just completely fucked his laptop. <laughs> Yeah, there's a 50-50 shot that this podcast ends with me hitting the table and everything falling off. <laughs> everything from gun cannon to this guy, to this to guy. these headphones. The, uh, the, the BenQ W-I-T-E reading light. Not spun. Not spun. Could have been free. spun. Free, no. Any email I get offering me a product for free that is definitely done with Google Auto Translate, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. know not to ask for any money at this point. I just have to really want the product. So you're just instinctively getting into it now. You're just oh, like, I'm going to put pissing long cloth off again. <laughs> fuck that thing. <laughs> if it comes off again, he's losing the rank. I don't give a fuck. It needs more glue, mate. You, uh, what? But there's only like two contact points. Yeah, but more glue on those two contact points. Okay. <clears throat> Would you like me to read a few of those patron things? Out? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Just slam this on the table. I'd like to learn the names of some of your patrons, mate. Well, you can learn their usernames, man. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, don't dox them or anything. Stan Buckley from 27 Regency Street says, I like female space marines. <laughs> me too, Stan. <laughs> Nick T describes this hobby as, uh, described it to his family as a DIY board game. Mm. Which is quite nice. Mm. There's the bits. Fuck off and crack on. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, and you can decide what rules to use them with, which is entirely true. I forget that. Because you can use any rules for that. Yeah. You could I, be a I chess piece. What's interesting about that for me and what you were saying earlier is the same thing. It's like, mm. um, this could be a relatively inexpensive hobby if you wanted yes. it to be. Because you yeah. could just buy an army mm. and then use that for whatever you wanted. Mm. Technically. Yeah, yeah. No one does that, obviously. No. 
No, you, but can, like, you can buy the little green plastic toy soldiers from Pound. Yeah, if you it's want. kind of like both having a deck of cards and yes. you can play a number of different games. Like we could play Star Wars Legion with Warhammer models if we wanted to. And vice versa. If we didn't have Warhammer models. Hey, how's this one? Alex describes it as a physical manifestation of your imagination. No holds barred. You think it, you can make it. Which is quite nice. Uh, is that true, though? They need to make the model get surely. Yeah, you can do what you want with it, though. Yeah, I, I guess so. There, there really are so many... There's so many different iterations. Mm. So many different things. Yeah. That you can combine into basically whatever you want. Yeah, essentially, yeah. And obviously, with 3D printing and shit, mm. you can just print extra arms, heads, legs, give it whatever. Uh, but then, like, I made that giant tetanus nightmare mechapede thing all just from old model kits and junk and that doesn't resemble anything that it originally was yeah definitely i I suppose as well like yeah you can go completely outside of the model kits even Mm -hmm. some of the most interesting things you've made for me have always Mm -hmm. just been the terrains and buildings Mm -hmm. and things that you've just made from random bits of wood yes gravel that you left in my car for six months things like that or the gravel from france the gravel from france that was in my car door for nine months and then you did eventually use it it's all gone now. Oh, it's I all gone. I had more. It all got used. I took more when we were working at the Hiscox building. Yeah. Because they had some really nice gravel on the, the patio up top with the little garden thing they've got. And the director of the shoot was just watching me and I was like, <laughs> I I take this. Turns out the director of that shoot is actually a Warhammer guy. Oh, right. So you explained it to him and he was like, oh, okay. Yeah. No, I I'll didn't explain it to him. Like. But then I, I saw him in the, the War Games Club down the road recently and. He didn't know I was into it. I didn't know he was into it. And he was almost semi-ashamed. He was like a dad walking in on their, on their teenage son wanking. <laughs> like, oh, you're right, mate. How's it going? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. 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 It's just a film. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a film. It's an art house film. <laughs> it's art. Actually, it's not porn. <laughs> it's art. Another one from Moo Juice is uh, it's just playing with war dollies. <laughs> Which is quite honest. It is playing with toys. It is playing with toys. Uh, Kiros says the art of war, which is a bit serious. Although it is a relatively good book. A what? Sun Tzu's art of war. Sun Tzu's art of war. Can't say I've read it. I've read the I've read the comic book of it with okay. pictures. There's a pop up version as well. Is it about war? Is the art of war actually like about? How to do war, yes. or is it? Yeah. It is about how to do yeah, war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was just a metaphor. No, 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 no. I think it's used in wankers use it in fucking business practice and stuff like that. It's like rules of engagement. And shit essentially, like that. rules of engagement. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, it, right. It, basic stuff like uh, if you commit a mistake, but fix the mistake before anyone notices you haven't committed a mistake. So sort of okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I can I use one of the fancy emblazoned shoulders? Yeah, of course you can. He is the sergeant, after all. Yeah. Mm. Back, pap, fuck, I fucked it already. Back, pack, boom, bap. Back, pack, boom, bap. Yeah, that's his username. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he knows I can't say it. I back, boom, Jar Jar's Nadsack says, <laughs> so many different parts of the hobby to get into, collecting minis, collecting gaming books, putting t- minis together whether following the instructions or not, painting minis, playing with minis, and all of the previously mentioned in various combinations. Throw in the extra spice that there are more and more games available to play, covering fictional and factual backgrounds, and there are an infinite combination of options for everyone, which is... I think we, yeah, we've we kind of fumbled our way through our own description of that to a degree. Yeah. There's, there is definitely something for everyone. Like, I think what is interesting to me about it is that they're... Like, I don't think I would ever play a game with them if I had them. Mm -hmm. I actually find the playing of it mostly to be a bit too slow to keep my attention. I like Legion, but I like hanging out with you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's fair. But, you know, um, whereas this I do enjoy. Mm -hmm. I I like things that take me a lot of concentration mm-hmm. i can do that i like collecting things mm-hmm. i like putting things on a shelf mm-hmm. i don't like when the shelf gets too full i was just about to say yeah, yeah which yeah. my shelves already are as a 30 year old nerd mm-hmm. war gamer or not my shelves mm-hmm. are already full of tat yes because <laughs> your partner likes tat as well she also does yeah, like yeah, yeah. tat yeah um 
But I like that you can, you could absolutely spend all of your time making and painting models mm. without having to engage in the game, mm -hmm. or you could just spend, you could just buy a load of pre-built, pre-painted models and just play the game if that's what you wanted to mm -hmm. do. Like I think that that is yes, that's a really interesting part of the hobby that that not a lot of other similar hobbies kind of allow for. No, the breadth and scope within the broader hobby, as it is called the hobby, mm. is is absolutely fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the amount of different skill sets you need, and then you throw fucking filming and video editing as well. There's no wonder I'm a fucking wreck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your brain, brain burnt out, mate. What are you doing today, Everton? <laughs> I'm taking part number 69 for one of my shoulders. Wee, wee. You might not get that one. I was a thinker. That was a thinker. That was a thinker. It's a thick. Gluing together tons of plastic slash metal and resin soldiers. See, ah, yeah, we're just dealing with plastic. Well, see, that is that is another thing as well. Mm. I, I, I love a little metal model, a, a weighty little thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I know people that tell me that metal's not as good, and it's like, well, good in, good by whose metric? Good for what? Apparently it's more difficult to paint and it chips easier, which is arguably true. I think that's true, but a chipped metal model will look like it's got metal under the paint, which is cool. Like an old dinky toy car or something. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. only thing cooler than a new Hot Wheels is an old Hot Wheels. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I mean, when I was growing up in this hobby, the, the main boxes of like 20 figures were all in plastic. They were your faceless fodder, essentially. But if you wanted a character mm. that had some interesting shit going on, like mm -hmm. a fancy loincloth or he had a headdress or a special gun, they were always in metal. Mm. So in my head, characters and interesting models are heavier and made of metal. Yeah. And plastic ones are guff. It makes sense just from a practicality standpoint. If yeah. you're digging through a box of models mm -hmm. and you feel the one that's heavy, you're like, that guy's probably... Yes, more really important. Hit harder, be more important. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's just kind of. I think there's a lot of people in my generation that agree with that. Um, yeah, I think it's just it's just a more premium feel, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. Generally yeah. speaking, metal over plastic. Mm. Yes, yeah, so there's different materials. I'm also going to show you a sprue at the end from a different company, um, who make the thirstiest miniatures game ever. The thirstiest yes. one. Uh, sea Devil May Cry. Now, what is it? Um, what's the beach volleyball one? Dead or alive beach Dead volleyball. Dead or alive beach volleyball the game. With the with the boob physics. Mm. Yes. Uh I'm just gonna grab them spruce from Overdale. Okay, mate. This was sent to me by uh Jeff Munthal, Dr. Ether. Not to be confused with Dr. Bastard. <laughs> A different man. A different user. Who there, also no. sends you things? Uh no, he doesn't know. But I have referred Come on, to bastard. Dr. Bastard. Come on, you bastard. Uh, but these are from a game called Kingdom Death, which is a very thirsty game. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Just ran out of like things to say it like thirty years ago. Kingdom of Death. Been, yeah. What do you want to call your game? Black Knight. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Just, <laughs> that's up there with Warrior Knights. Warrior Knights, and, yeah. Uh, Swordmen. Chainsaw Warrior, if you're there. Warlock, that's nice and simple. That's from the 80s, so they were running out back then. Well, they were. that's okay, though. There's like a bell curve of it, isn't there? Right, it's like, yeah. at a certain point, you were allowed to call it just Warlock when yes. there was no other Warlock games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, now that there's quite a lot of Warlock games, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to be, you've got to try something else. So Warlock Knights, Kingdom yeah. Warlock. But there's still marketing agencies involved in these things. And they, hint, hint, do not... Yeah. They don't. If you look at that, for example, that is oh, well. ludicrous. Yeah, that looks like a tongue. It's a cloak. It's meant to be leather. I well, I, yeah, but I yeah. mean, like the texture of it. Yeah, yeah. It's very impressive. Yeah. And this is kind of... Yeah, well, like down here as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super, super detailed. They've got a lot of money in their Kickstarter. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, but you would think that the biggest company in the world doing this would be able to achieve that. You would, but then it's about design philosophy. Uh, and what these guys do really fucking well mm. is make things that are easy and rewarding to paint. Okay. Like Yeah, I so can, like I imagine that would actually be quite frustrating to get a good finish on. Yeah. And because of the amount of detail, you want to invest more time in it, do more detail. 
I painted some Warhammer stuff recently, which had a lot of bare-chested barbarian dudes. And normally it takes me fucking forever and I'll scratch it and start again to do highlighting on flesh tones. Mm. But these guys are so big and they they have loads of muscle definition, like muscles within muscles. And it's all so heroic scale that I was just painting it and it felt like the paint was coming off the brush. Mm. I thought, I don't, need to, I don't need to do any more to this. Mm. This looks like one of the best things I've ever painted. And I've been here half an hour. This is fucking ridiculous. So they're really forgiving in that sense. Obviously, this is a guy in armor that's one color, which helps. Speaking of this guy in armor, yes, I think he might be finished. Uh, I don't see no backpack and I don't see no base. That backpack bum Moving back, on. Mate. Moving <laughs> on. I gave him the fanciest head the, that had a helmet, though. Nice. He's got a little side laser and a skull on his head. Fuck yeah. That's how you know he's the big boy. That's how you know he's the boss man. That's how you know he's the boss man. He's the main man. Um, 45. Yeah? Yeah, that's what I've decided. You're going to enjoy the mod lines on them? No, I no, don't, I think, don't I will. think fucking so. I don't think I will. <laughs> there he is, 45. So yeah, once, the, once they get... What was that? Yeah, the, once you get to a certain point with plastic casting, uh, the quality, air quotes quality, is all much of a muchness now. Uh, it becomes more about design philosophy. Mm-hmm. So, like, these ones are all very amicable to paint. All the details are verily, uh, very, very, v- yeah, very, verily, verily, ver- verily, verily well pronounced. And they, they reward kind of like a lot of quick stuff, a lot of tricks, um, tricks that they teach specifically. Again, it's that getting you into the ecosystem. Mm. Uh, whereas, like the Kingdom Death stuff, I mean, there's a reason that I think they sold 19,000 copies on their first Kickstarter run wow. of the game. Made over 12 million, I think. And no one is painted it on YouTube. <laughs> you get some, like, finished models. You get a couple of models that pop up in other games. Like, I've seen some of the characters get used in Frostgrave and stuff like that. People are doing the lore for it, because the lore is quite fabulous. Hmm. Um, I'm thirsty. Yeah, they, got, they do a lot of waifu models. Like you look at scale it, miniature waifu, scale miniature waifu is like the, 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 the hips on a human cannot get that wide, sir. Please, please have please, a cold sir. shower. Yes, <laughs> uh, monsters with massive wangers, um, women sat in like the hands of giants, but their fingers look like wangers. Vor, mm, not far off. <laughs> they were essentially trying to make. A Monster Hunter meets Dark Souls game. Mm. And they have done that. But they've... I think it's kind of inspired. They've taken all of the things about it and just rolled with the Japanese thing. Like, even the name. You think? Yeah, it sounds like a bad translation. Yeah, yeah. If you were, if you were a Japanese guy picking up that book and you said that to yourself in a Japanese dialect, you'd be like, yeah, that sounds fucking right cool, that does. <laughs> sounds like shit over here. Um, but yeah, they've just kind of rolled with that. I imagine the characters are called stuff like Marvelous Chester and things. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leon Kennedy. Paladin Clive. <laughs> Paladin Clive. I think Clive. Paladin was... Clive from Yorkshire. Paladin Clive. Paladin Clive grew up in the trees of Somerset. I'm not cleansing this fucking grave yet. What are you, what are you thinking? Oh, I just, I'm just trying to get the mould lines, mate. I don't know you're trying to do. I'm just trying to get the mould lines. Oh, yeah, you've got the one with the little dots on it that are... Uh, Definitely part of the thing, but with the mold lines around it, you just ignore this. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, just ignore this. I think so. I think I think he's about as good as he's going to get in my in my hands, in my experience times. I think so. Love shaky man hands. Okay, so he goes on here. So we've got to put a little bit of glow in this little in that little backpack. Little backpack slot. That boom back. I do like the glow spot. Yeah, that's that's. I think that's the thing that got me when I first walked back into a games workshop a few years ago was the smell of spray paint and that glue. And that I'm fucking leaving here with solvent something. abuse. That might be it. Maybe they just get kids hooked on it. Just get kids hooked on solvent, and then they get depressed because they don't have solvents and glue anymore, and then they come back to it. That might be it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On a serious note. On a serious note. But are they supposed to have flags? Not. Uh... They can, they can do. Show me the box, mate. Oh, fuck it, yes, got a flag on the box. 
So they all got flags on the box. Oh no, only top guy's got a flag. Your yeah, front guy who you've just made. No, I didn't. Ever. You did. You made the sergeant. I did. Oh yeah. <laughs> did. I didn't I did. give him a head though. I gave him a different head, so he's a different guy. He's got the blank one. Okay, fine. I'll give him. A, I'll give him a flag. Do you want me to do the flag? Tell me, jump me to. No. <laughs> Can't jump in at the last second and take all the glory, mate. I know your game. I wasn't gonna do that. I know your game, mate. Okay, mate. And then I get to pick between one or nine, one or ten, or one eleven. I think 109 goes with the, the Roman sort of um, centurion look. Okie dokie. But he's your model, mate. Well, until you leave him with me. Until I hand him off to you and then you've got to put him in an army somewhere. Hi. <laughs> we're so close though, mate. We're nearly, we're nearly done. We are nearly done. I nearly done did it. And I think it almost took exactly the length of an episode of a podcast for me to do it as well. So Yeah, I'm glad we didn't drive through the full box. <laughs> I would have taken a very different approach, I think. <laughs> Put it all in a mincer, pour yeah. the glue in, done. Yeah. Shake it around. Yeah. Come out with a guy, we'll call him the blob. There's people that do freehand on their flags and they paint just essentially miniature oil paintings. It's fucking insane. I've seen entire tanks painted with freehand like battle scenes on them. That's craziness. Uh, that is where I kind of draw the line. That's that where you that's lose me. <laughs> that's where I'm out of here. I'll be honest, you noticed I'm getting impatient now. I thought I was done a minute ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happens to me as well. I'm, I'm a naturally impatient person with a, a high boredom threshold, mm. which doesn't normally work. But uh, when I have painted a lot of models for a video and then realise they all have belt buckles and belts and that shit to do and eyes to paint, I'm like, oh, man, no, I'm just going to do this tomorrow. No way. Okay, this is tough. That needs, needs more glue is what I need. It needs more glue. It also needs filing down, I reckon. You think so? Just, there's a little knobble in there. It doesn't sit flat. Put glue on both sides. <sighs> Fucking hell. Boring both sides of the bread. <laughs> oh, I almost put the flag on the wrong way around. All right, Prince Michael. Prince Michael put him. That was like one of the first fucking arguments you and I ever had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted you to butter both sides of the bread to make a sandwich. And I wouldn't do it. And you wouldn't do it. Outright refused. Have seen the price of butter these days? There we go, there we go, there we go. Before you do your victory lap, come on. Little, do, little. Does he, does he just get straight up glued on there? Little double of uh, glue on each foot, and then you're good. He's leaning back. <laughs> I was gonna, he looks like he's had background but he's straightening it out. That was the very first thing I glued, was the legs to the base of the body, and I yeah. was like... <laughs> That's the decision you were talking about earlier where you've made the decision early on and it's impacted everything. It's impacted the entire thing, yeah. The the angle of his waist. But because you used about nine times less glue than I normally use, you could probably could bend him forward a bit. I think you could, you could then quite easily him. pull him apart yeah. without a lot of effort. Yeah. But you've got nine more to make, so that's all right. Yay! 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 That's your th that's your thumbnail, damn it. <laughs> there we go. You've made your first space marine. I actually have made a space marine now. Yeah. Officially part of the thing. That wasn't so bad. No, I, I quite enjoyed that. Yeah. I quite enjoyed that. It's quite alright, isn't it? Yeah. The, like I, I I wasn't going slowly on purpose. No, no. Obviously we were chatting. Mm hmm That did take me. An hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> um, trim this video down. A well, bit. we might have to trim the video down a little bit. Only... But yeah, uh, I'm not. Well, I'm not sure. I'm up for ten hours on a whole box. But I guess oh, you'd, God, no. you'd speed up. But maybe you wouldn't speed up. <laughs> you would potentially speed up. The, the I, th I think the general thing that happens in this hobby is that people will build an entire project with a mind that they're going to then paint it. And then realise they then have to paint it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is where the the joke about the the, the piles of grey, the piles of shame come from, because everyone just has boxes and boxes of unpainted yeah. stuff. Not me, of course. Not you, of course. I just have them unassembled in their boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they make better backgrounds for podcasts. Yes, they Although do. Those are those are board games, right? Mm. <laughs> uh, Dark Future. Yeah, I'll give you that. That's Games Workshop's Mad Max game. 
which is quite a nice piece. Mm. Mordheim is a full-on skirmish war game. Oh, cool. So uh, skirmish. He's still in his bucks as well, still in his plastic. He's still in his wrap, which is an incredibly rare thing. So an unsealed box, a few people have seen it. Most people don't give a fuck because they're not paying attention. Uh, but that is sealed Mordheim. There's people already on eBay like Jesus Christ. When, how did you afford that? I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, and it's also was owned by the guy who designed one of the factions in there. So that was oh. one of the first off the assembly line. Very cool. And it was sold. Um, basically, all of his stuff was sold by his partner after he passed away. Right. And so that's that version of it belonged to the guy who designed it. Basically, the guy who made it, yeah. Wow. It's one of the first three or four off the assembly line, I imagine. That's pretty cool. And it's still sealed. And we'll never know because it's still sealed. For now. <laughs> until until we get one million subscribers on this channel. If I unseal it and only 10,000 people watch it, <laughs> I am done. <laughs> yeah. Just punch a man throw some money down the drain, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the guy who I sold my unopened base pack of Pokemon cards to? Yeah, didn't he get a Ninetales or something? He got a Ninetales, yeah. He bought it off me. Do you remember when... Put viewers at home, you remember when Logan Paul got really into Pokemon cards and they all became really expensive? Yeah. And I had an unopened boosters pack, just one, from the original base set, and I sold it for... Six hundred and fifty pounds. Six hundred and fifty on eBay, just in a standard auction. I was like, I wonder if this will go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six hundred and fifty quid. Yep. And the guy messaged. I messaged the guy afterwards, and I was he like, bought some fucking scales to weigh them as well. Yeah, he you? asked me to buy scales to weigh them to check that it had something in it because apparently there's something about various slight different grams can mean slightly different cards. Shinies weigh more. I shinies think. weigh more, but I think yeah. they I know, they don't all have shinies. Mm -hmm. So basically, he made me check it out a shiny in it. And he bought it for 650 quid. I asked him if he was going to open it, and he said, no, don't be silly. And then the day he received it, he messaged me and told me that that was a nine tails in there. Yeah. Fuck's sake. But it's a, it's a mad, it was a mad move because mm -hmm. there was no combination of cards in there that added up to 650 quid. No. So even if he'd no. pulled the Charizard, he would have yeah. lost money. Yeah, because uh, it, it was... Cause a, it wasn't first edition. It was just a regular... Yeah, it was a 97 one. Yeah. And the Charizard from that is worth about 130. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which would be nice to have, but... But also not for six hundred and fifty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I keep ho kept hold of that actual pack for twenty years, and then out of nine tails in it. Pretty funny. Yeah, it was one of those instances where you said something offhand, and I just filed it away to keep forever. Like that time when you said, oh, "Don't worry about that. I've got diabetes. I could die at any point." And you turned up two hours. You didn't turn up to work one day, and I got the entire city in a fucking frenzy trying to break your fucking door down because you fucking slept in. And he was like, "Maybe his phone ran out of battery." No. No, no. No, no. No, asking you to put it on silent was hard enough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you just offhandedly mentioned you've got it. And then I was in the shop on a Sunday, mm -hmm. and everyone was coming in like, Phew. got any sealed packs of uh, first-gen Pokemon cards? It got to the point where I was like, no, piss off. <laughs> no, obviously, no, I no don't. One's got, why no are you one asking just me today? So I just eBayed it. Fucking help me, because... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a great text to receive. I can't, I can't remember what I bought with that money. I probably spanked it on nothing. You paid off some credit card. Ah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Debt. Another piece of useless <laughs> shit just in my head. Dave, my biographer. Yeah, you you sold it just after Christmas and you paid off your Christmas credit card with it. You're welcome. <laughs> right. Yeah, what are you thinking? Final thoughts? I, 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 en I enjoyed doing it and I'm glad that I've done it now. Mm. I feel like now I at least have a better understanding of the physical nature of what this entails mm -hmm. which i certainly did not before yes so a worthwhile endeavor yeah I, I have a newfound respect for the model creating portion of this because because honest honest to god i really did think it was more like gundam i yeah. thought it was all socket joints and stuff yeah, 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 yeah i didn't i didn't know that you couldn't pose them after the fact honestly right, but that, i've never right. actually touched any of your models because i'll oh. destroy them yeah, yeah, yeah. i, I figured that either. you could manipulate no, no. them no 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 so so, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Once they're fixed, they're fixed. Once they're painted, they're painted, mm. essentially. Until you've got to put them all in paint stripper. In I was going to say, until these guys go in the paint stripper. <laughs> and then, so when, when you chuck him in paint stripper, will he will he come apart, probably? Uh, not the stripper that I'm using, no. Mm. I'm using something called BioStrip, which is really fucking gentle mm. on plastic and glue. It's not gentle on your skin. 
which I learnt. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, my hand just shed its skin like a fucking snake. Oh my god! Yeah, it was pretty rough. It didn't hurt, but it was just. It's almost worse. It was. You just woke up the next day like <gasps> like the fucking toxic goo guy at a RoboCop. Um, but these are going to get stripped and they're going to get painted red as they're supposed to be. So what we're going to do every time we do one of these, and hopefully we have a guest on, please leave your suggestions for a guest uh, down mm. in the comments. Who do you think I'm going to get on with best? Or me. Or you. Yeah. And can that one person be the same person is the question. That is the same question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on someone that's got your energy. And you two are just <laughs> up and down. Wow. I'm just saying. Yeah, 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 definitely. Shut the fuck up. Build your model. Yeah, who do you think will be best here? Um... And we're going to do a show and tell every time so they yeah. can bring something fun that is not necessarily miniatures game related. Mm. It's show and tell in the truest sense, like when you're a kid and you bring a fucking rock in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this rock. Uh, like my wife with her rock collection. Yeah, I mean, your, your wife would be great at show and tell because she would be able to bring in anything. And tell. And tell. <laughs> yes. This is my collection of concrete and slag. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got it from this car park, and that makes it special. Um, good. We love you, mate. We love you, mate. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. So what have you brought for show and tell? What have I brought for show and tell? I'll give you a bit of room, mate. Yeah, Watch give out. me a touch of room. Watch out for gun cannon. Uh, gun cannon, all right. Make sure you don't get in your way. Too. All right, gun cannon. Right, in fact, gun cannon, this might be your replacement. I haven't decided yet. Yes. But it might be. I have brought a model that I have. A war dolly. A war dolly. I brought in my my naked snake. No, not naked snake. I'm sorry. I'm such a That's dickhead. punished venom snake. It's punished venom snake. Literally not naked snake. I'm so sorry. I am actually a true fan. I just got platinum on Metal Gear Solid 2. So you did? I am a real fan. You did. I just completed big boss mode Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, so this is my venom snake play arts model, mm. which I have never opened ever, ever. But it's been sat on a shelf upstairs for a while now and is unsealed mm -hmm. so i'm kind of tempted now to open it since it's already lost its kind of box value yeah the, the adhesive is kind of just the adhesive uh, down here is gone perish. which really annoys me we can we can re that if you i'd like to in fact we've got some glue right here because these things are not the wrong kind of glue <laughs> these things are not cheap they're not cheap but yeah let's uh since we're here since we're on camera open these crates let's open the crates see what we got i know he's got like three different hands which is really cool Oh my god, there's screws and bolts. Screws and bolts. It's an accurate depiction of how that fucking game is held together. Oh my days. Me. Okay. Oh shit, an action base. Now we're talking. <laughs> oh yeah. See, now this guy is posable, I reckon. He's posable. He's but you've posable. got things to clip out. Oh my, I'm not going to do that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no chance of doing that. If yeah. He's got three hands, a pistol and a knife for his tactical Melga Solid 3 style, where you hold the knife on the ground and you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah there's yeah. an AK. An AKS-74U, probably. And <laughs> Colonel. And then what looks like an M4 over there with a, with a tactical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's very, very cool. Everything's tactical. It's all pretty tactical. Open it up. Okay. Or is this, is this taped up? No, it's not. It's not taped up. I know the Japanese love their tape. Okay, I'll open this bit up. Mm -hmm. We should have a gun cannon, mate. Gun cannon. He's got, like, the chunkiest thighs I've ever seen. He does in the game as well. This is not very uncomfortable. Can't give you a mint on card price for that, mate, that's safe. There we go, like butter. How many years have I had this sitting around, do you think? A lot of many. Uh, five. I think you got Miller first, didn't you? I did, I have yeah. I have a Miller upstairs. So he's got little, he's got replaceable hands. Robo hands. How did that go in there? Shit. He's I'm losing his, it. He's got a button on his arm that fires his robot hand off, right? What, this model does? <laughs> he fucking better do. He fucking better do now. Oh, wow. Oh, he's got a real heft to him. That's not. That's more premium than my action, man. Yeah, I mean, play arts don't fuck around. There's a reason they're like 150 quid a figure. Wow. Holy shit. He's very cool. These are like... 
Yeah, yeah, actual wires. Real nice wires. It's actually a joke how nice those skin tones are. Have a, have a little feel on that, mate. I know, a little. Fucking hell. Yeah, the vest is separate. The skin is actually textured. The gun is very cool, the AK. The good. Lucky. He's got to be satchel with his look chin. There's some mold lines on here, mate. Give it here. But the guns are, the guns are super cool. Yeah. They look huge, but I think they are they're to scale, aren't they? He's just big. Oh, yeah, they're definitely to scale. He's a big one. Yeah, yeah. What scale do you think this is, mate? Uh, Hero Military Extreme 120th 23mm. I'd say 1 12th to 1 9th. And he's got his Walkman. He does have his Walkman from the game Metal Gear Solid 5. Simultaneously one of the best and worst video games ever made. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's gorgeous. So that's my, that's my show and tell for this week. And he's your new, probably, I thought I think I might use him as my microphone, man. Yeah? I will see. Thanks, Snake. Thanks for your time today. Been lovely having you. Your, um, your contribution. No, you know what? Fuck it. Just stay now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're doing it. Here we go. Shut that shit Shuts on up. the floor. Shut him on the floor. Here we go, Snake. Okay. There we go. Can we put a gun in his hand? I reckon you could put a gun in his hand. Don't probably need a different hand. Well, there's ones that you just throw all over the, the floor. The ones that I've just thrown all over the floor. Jesus Christ. Ah, it's all right. Okay, Snake. Here we go. Sneak. Happy show and tell day. Nice. That's fucking impressive. It's very nice. Yeah, yeah. He's even got his little Venom, his little Venom Pokey boy. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that Venom Snake is the big boss that dies in the Metal Gear MGS games? I did. You've told me that one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But he's not the real big boss, though. Is he's he? not the real big boss. No. no, he was the big boss's medic, and they gave him. Facial reconstruction surgery to make him look like big boss. Fuck off, idiot. And they convinced him he was, so he didn't even know that he wasn't. But you find out at the end, right? You do find out at the end after they skip the last third of the game because they ran out of money. Yes. And then they just skip to the conclusion. Yes. It's actually really cool, though, to be fair, because yeah. the, 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 the mission of Metal Gear 1, mm -hmm. the game, is called, like, Infiltration A113 right. or something. At the end scene in Metal Gear Solid Five, when you're when you're to revealed the Venom Snake isn't really Big Boss. Mm -hmm. Big Boss has given him this tape, and the tape says "Infiltration A Bloody Blah." And he puts it into an MSX, which is Fuck the, yeah, the, the console that you use that what the original Metal Gear game came out on. Oh shit! So he literally <laughs> puts Metal Gear the game into the MSX to learn about. Yeah, it's great. It's great, which all really ties back to Metal Gear Solid Two. When you're not even really sure that it's real or not, or if it's all VR, the whole game is about is how, the Raiden one. Yeah, the Raiden yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. about how Raiden's mission was actually all just to convince you he was Snake, or whatever it is that happens. He was just a VR training mission. It was like. VR training missions. The, the real friends we made were the VR training missions along the way. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. The first first viewers in the world of of. This guy. Oh. The man calls me some love. <laughs> yeah, because you need to be acquainted with your action base, don't you, bud? He does. I've brought some also weird Japanese shit. This one I don't know anything about. Okay. But it is called... Uh, I found it in a hard-off. I love a hard-off. Love a hard-off. I love a hard-off. Uh, you know that when you went to Japan mm. and you gave me that part of Saturn Games... But were just any old shit you found in Just anything I found them yeah, looked yeah. interesting. Yeah, the Godzilla one is uh, <laughs> cha-ching. It's actually good. It's actually good. No, it's not good. Not good, but worth money. Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this one is probably not worth any money. It was like 100 yen. And it is Tomoyasi Hotel or Hote Stolen Song. And it is a virtual music adventure. And there are explosions. Uh, the big boss man is there. I think you're going to... It's it's definitely an FMV game, right? And I, so that guy on the left, he doesn't look computer generated, but the the guy on the right does look computer generated. But I reckon it's all a live action video game. That would make sense with interactive moments on a PS One. So you know it's probably going to run for about forty minutes before you run out of memory. There's like there there is like a, there is stuff going on on the back, but yeah. it's like dark beneath the title, so you can't see. Come on, baby, let's ride. 
is what I can read. Good. It's one to two players. Yes, it is. Wow, that's amazing. Are we going to give that a go at some point? We can absolutely give that a go. I've got a region free PS1, so we can amazing, give that a go. Amazing, amazing. Uh, the actual one I wanted to talk about is Akon Kagua, which is a very interesting little thing that I've wanted for a while. I will never play this one. I will play the translated fan version on my uh, SD card PS1. Nice, nice. Because it's all in Japanese. It's basically a, an interactive novel. And what you've essentially got is a game from 1997 that is about a plane crash, and you have to survive in, I think it's like the Himalayas mountains. Right. Uh, collect resources. People are going to fight with each other over resources. You have to keep everyone happy. So it's like every game in 2024. Every game in 2024, but with the fucking jank of PS1 uncanniness. Uh, Those look all right for PS1 graphics, yeah, though. For late night, they look like Hideo style. Yes, uh, and this will be really fucking low budget as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was, it's kind of just a really weird, interesting thing that I've always wanted to play. Uh, of course, it's never been fucking used. And it's beautifully presented. Yeah, so nice. That's a really. That's like they got a matte finish to that. Two yeah. discs. Two discs. Yeah, and it, it just seems really interesting. It's one of, naturally, I, I follow a lot of groups that are all about fan translation and stuff like that, mm. and this one got recently done. Uh, the other one I started playing was Mazerna Falls, which was an open-world detective game on the PS1, which was essentially Twin Peaks. I love to hear open-world and PS1 in the same sentence. It's frightening, isn't it? Yeah. Look, that's my interesting thing to bring. Akon Kagua. Wonderful. 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 There's plenty more weird crap I can grab at the last minute. I've lost one of his hands. Of course you fucking know. It's on the floor. Oh, I threw it in rage. Are you Belen? Look who's there. No. No. No, not Belen. No, not, not the Belen. His hands. <laughs> I want to know if he can hold the guns. Battery's running low, by the way, on these radios. Yeah, I mean, I'm almost certain we're done. I think we're done. <laughs> I think we're yes. done. Because I'm going to start playing with this model yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Fuck. But yeah, thank you for watching. Um, and we'll if you see did you. Work. If you made it this far, then good on you. Honestly, fair play. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Say bye, snake. Bye, snake. <laughs>